Hello, and welcome to this mini-series I'm doing on Selenium for Python. Um, just a quick introduction to it. Um, so what Selenium is basically is a way for you to automate your browser. And you can do this in, I believe, C++, um, Java, uh, Python as well, obviously, because that's what we're going to be using today. But uh, it's a way for you to automate your browser. Um, so the way we can do that, let's say theoretically, we want to enter something in a Google search uh, query box. So let's say we want to enter NBA Finals or something, right? So we did that just on our own manually in our own browser. We could theoretically in Selenium automate this to enter in a whole list of inputs, right? So we could do, again, NBA Finals. We could tell the computer, basically, or the, in the Python script in, with Selenium to actually enter in the query and click on an element on the next page. We could do that. We can enter all sorts of form uh, data stuff. We can click on page buttons. We can do a lot of stuff with browser automation in Selenium. Very, very powerful tool. Um, but why would we use Selenium in the first place realistically? Um, so why I use it typically um, is to web scrape. So with browser automation, what we can do actually, it, Selenium makes it very easy to um, web scrape Ajax sites. And we're going to go into what Ajax sites are in this tutorial so you guys can get an understanding on why we're using Selenium. A lot of people tend to say you can use um, the module Mechanize in Python for this. I would stay away from this because I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or something, Mechanize for JavaScript, I don't think it really works. Um, what Mechanize allows you to do is to pass headers um, with an HTTP, HTTP request very easily. Um, and I believe, I don't know if it can handle form data, anything with JavaScript, I'm pretty sure it can't do, but if I'm wrong, which I could be, um, just let me know. But Selenium makes it pretty darn easy to, to web scrape with Ajax sites. So first off, um, what we want to do is download Selenium. So for those of you who don't have it, um, I know this isn't a tutorial or it's not going to be on getting pip, but what pip is basically is it's a, it's a package manager for Python makes your whole life so much easier because throughout your your coding tenure <laughs> basically in Python um, you're going to be downloading packages all the time I don't care if you're in Anaconda um, a data analysis package that I'm in where you have an, an awful lot of modules installed already um, or you're in idle you're gonna be doing it all the time so usually it's with the command pip install and in this case it would be selenium right um, I believe in the terminal you can also run a sudo easy install um, pip to install pip anyways. Um, but to get pip other than that, I've covered this before. I might do a tutorial uh, later on it with just the basics. I'm assuming all of you who are at this point have pip already or have gotten a way of manually downloading uh, the files for all the modules, which you can do if you just type in selenium download on you on a Google search um, you can download it manually and place it in the right directory you can do that if pip doesn't work but normally you'll just do get pip.py if you don't have pip and right click on this file right here I already have it save link as and then once it's downloaded double click on it and your terminal or command prompt um, if you're using a PC should pop up and it should have installed pip um, I'm sure there's other ways to do it homebrew is another way as well but um, to get modules, I'm sorry, not to install pip. But pip makes life so much easier. Really easy package manager for Python. Anyways, so that's how you would get Selenium via pip. Um, but that's not the end of the story here. We also need a web driver. And what a web driver does is, let's say theoretically we're using Google Chrome, which we are right here to Google search stuff. Now, when you automate your browser, you have to launch an instance of your browser typically. Um, this isn't always true. You can go headless, which means that this won't be shown or launched this whole browser um, and that's uh, achieved through a module called Phantom JS and we're going to get into that later in this tutorial series but for now um, we're just going to go into how to download web drivers so I have all mine in this folder right here so web scraping drivers and here are all my drivers that I use Chrome driver obviously for Google Chrome and then gecko drivers for Firefox and Phantom JS is to go headless so um, the way you download these drivers is literally you just type in Chrome driver download and this is how I did it um, I'm sure people have different methods but I clicked on this and then for whatever 
computer you have or operating system you have rather um, if you're Mac if you're Windows um, Linux based you click on your respective one download it and what should pop up is this right here for Chrome driver you can see this icon right next to it um, and you can put it in I put it in really any directory I want I use an executable path within uh, Selenium, which makes it pretty easy to reference it from everywhere. But if you are having problems loading a driver, specifically, I did have problems with Gecko driver. Try putting it in your bin folder and whatever IDE you're running, or um, or even in, in your users or user slash bin folder um, for your at its most basic level. Um, so for my Anaconda bin folder works great. So or it did. Um, it kind of resolved the problem. So, but with an executable path, I don't even think we really need any of that. So, um, I'll show you that way, which is way easier. To, you can put these in any folder you want to make them all organized. Um, and also, when you do run these with these um, drivers right here, you're going to get a log of basically everything you did. So, that'll also pop up too. So, don't be nervous about any of that. Uh, anyways, so I just wanted to quickly, before this tutorial comes to an end uh, we covered how to get selenium how to get uh, the chrome driver uh, gecko driver whatever you're going for just to manually download it to computer and put it in a directory um, what I just want to go over right now is Ajax um, so what does that mean so Ajax stands for uh, asynchronous, asynchronous JavaScript and XML um, now why would we need to use selenium to scrape that data like it doesn't make any sense we could just use beautiful soup to make our lives a lot easier I'm going to show you why that is not possible. Um, so, basically, what goes on is that if we go, let's say Zach's Investment Research is a good example. So, Zach's Investment Research. Um, and let's just enter and click here. And I'll type in AAPL in the search bar. And we can scroll down here. Um, I like to use the fundamental charts. And we arrive to this page. Now, normally most people, when they scroll down, they see a chart and then they see EPS diluted for the metric we're looking at. Um, now, this is a table, obviously. And most people would say, I mean, yeah, let's just use beautiful soup to parse the table and parse the HTML. That will not be possible. And the reason being is because this is an Ajax site basically and this is an, a dynamically updated table via the Ajax um, web development technique so let to illustrate this and why this would not work is typically um, if we went to our IDE and I already had this written out but I'll X out of this so this isn't anything new um, these are the modules we're going to be using just to illustrate this small point um, beautiful soup URL up to open up the URLs and beautiful soup obviously is to parse it so all we can do is URL equals wrap it in quotes um, and that's going to be our URL and let's open the URL so HTML equals URL lib 2 dot URL open and then what do we want to open URL and then we want to read it so dot read and let's create a beautiful soup object to pass the HTML through so soup equals BS dot beautiful I cannot spell today beautiful BS dot here we go, beautiful soup. And we want to pass the HTML to it and define an LXML parser. And so after that, let's just print soup to make sure everything's loaded properly. Awesome. We have everything there. Um, so if we said, uh, if we set a table variable to this and say soup.find underscore all, and let's say table, and we'll print table. Now we see here, this is these are all the tables in the entire HTML that were returned. Um, we do not see any data here, strangely, from this table, right? Now what if it's in a div? Because it can be in a div also. You can scroll through this all you want, and I promise you that you will not find this data. The reason being is because you can't parse this with an HTML parser. It's just not going to work. And the way you can validate this as well is it would be in the source code. Um, so if we look up an element um, in the table, so let's say 2.10, dollar sign 2.10, 
let's exclude the dollar sign you won't be able to find it zero out of zero found and the reason for that is because it's an ajax site and it's dynamically updated so the way it all works is this so basically um data is being sent back and forth all the time uh for some sites this one probably not as frequently probably at the end of the day it's dynamically updated it's dynamically updated without creating another instance of the page or reloading the page so in Twitter it's a good way to illustrate this um, let's go to Twitter and if we were on this and I follow no one and I don't really have that many uh, people on here anyway so um, if you had if you were following a lot of people you would see this dynamically updated right you'd see this oh man this guy tweeted this and this guy tweeted this the way that's working is via Ajax um, web development techniques so what's happening in this I think this is an easier way to illustrate it um, what's happening is if we right click and see what's going on behind the scenes and inspect and I don't know if any of you have been to this tab but it's called the networking tab and what this will basically show us if we hit uh, command R and it does this all the time goes to a different URL of course can't make life easy for us uh, hold on a sec let's get back it, it does this all the time um, let me go to my history and let's just go back to the Apple page um, it does this all the time at Zach's so bear with me for a sec let's just go back Zach's investment research and what I'm gonna do is right click inspect go back to the network tab make sure it's loaded and let's type in a quote APL and this is a good example right here of what's being sent back and forth um, we can actually see the term Ajax in here so this is the XHR tab and what this basically stands for is XML HTTP request um, so this is an object that acts as an API behind the scenes to make HTTP requests to send and re well basically to retrieve data um, and so data is sent and retrieved back and forth for this data in the table that we're about to look at if I ever get there um, to be dynamically updated so if we go right here um, I wanted to get back to our table uh, let's see fundamental charts that's what we were before and here we go we can see where, where, where we need to be right now and we can see the XHR tab being populated with data um, so what's going on basically is that again um, the web app typically Zach's right now what we're on um, the XML HTTP request object um, in this tab is acting as an API so it's being what's being done is that data is being requested and sent back and so the response what we're looking at is going to eventually modify the JavaScript um, within the source code pass it and update the table dynamically um, so that's is that's basically out in a in a very simple term how Ajax sites work and how the Ajax development technique has evolved so what it makes it makes it easier so that you don't have to open up a new page every time and it's all dynamically updated um, and you don't have to reload it so that's basically what happens now what if we followed one of these URLs so here's one right what happens if we double clicked on it there's our data from the XHR tab that's what's being transferred back um, so basically we could actually for the purpose of this tutorial circumvent all the selenium and just go straight to this which I'm going to do in later tutorials but um, for all intents and purposes I want to use this site for selenium because it's it's very neat um, and you can use a whole bunch of features of selenium to to use um, so let's theoretically say this wasn't available which sometimes it isn't for some sites in the XHR tab um, you can click drop downs and you can web scrape it manually if you had to um, you can click page next buttons um, you can click different buttons on the page 
You can do form entry stuff. You can do all sorts of stuff, and this is what we're going to be using for Selenium. But that was just a basic introduction into Ajax sites. I know it's not going to be a lecture on all sorts of HTTP requests and uh, Ajax uh, development techniques that get really nitty gritty. Um, but I just want you guys to have a basic understanding of why we're going to be using Selenium and why, for some sites, you can't just use an H, uh, HTML parser. Um, so that's basically this introduction and in the next tutorial we're going to actually scrape data and do form entry uh, click drop downs and click all sorts of buttons on there too and enter all sorts of fun stuff so yeah um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something please rate comment and subscribe and thank you I'll see you later